this video we're going to talk about decimals and how to convert between decimals and fractions and how to multiply decimals. Here's an example of a decimal right here. The, the one would be in the tens place, the two would be in the ones place, three is in the tenths place, four hundredths place, five is in the thousandths place, and the six would be the ten thousandths place. Uh, if you want to convert between decimals and fractions it's kind of nice to just to stay it in words first. You see, this, this would be 25 one hundredths. So as a fraction, it would just be 25 over 100, and you can then factor it and cancel the common factors of 5. Final answer is 1 fourth. By the way, if, if I'm going too fast for you here, you hit that pause button, okay? Be sure to hit the pause button. All right, on this one, we have a negative, this is the tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. This is negative four one thousandths. So if you write it as a fraction, you get negative 4 over 1,000. Now remember, 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10, so if you factor this down, you can cancel the 2's, and you end up with negative 1 over 250. This one is 1.4, which is 1 in 4 tenths, as a mixed number. You could write it as 14 over 10 as an improper fraction. When you reduce it, you cancel the 2's, you get 7 fifths. 3.0, that's just 3, which is 3. So, I, I should mention this because this comes up later, but when you see a number and you don't see a decimal next to it at the end, there's always a decimal at the end. Okay? If there's no decimal written, it's right at the end of the number. That's really important later. Okay, let's talk about how to multiply decimals. This is, this is a nice trick to this. I hope you remember. When you multiply decimals, you can, at first, you can just kind of ignore the decimal point. Pretend this is 12. Pretend this is 3. Now, of course, when you pretend it's 12, you, you've just moved the decimal over one to the right. And when you pretend this is 3, you've just moved the decimal 2 over to the right. So you, you, you just move the decimal 3 places to the right when you, when you pretend this is 12 times 3. So what you have to do to counterbalance that is move it back. Move it 3 places to the left. The decimal's right here after the 6. Move it back 3 places. 1, 2, 3. There's your answer. 0 0.036. Same is true here. Let's, let, let's, let's pretend this is negative 4 times 6, which is negative 24. But you really move the decimal over 2 to the right here, if you call this a 4, and 2 to the right if you call this a 6, so that's a total of 4 places. So if you call this negative 24, you better move the decimal a total of 4 places back to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, there's your answer. This one, you're, you could do this in stages here, see? You could, you could think of this as 12 times 1, which means you move the decimal over 2 to the right, and then multiply that, that's 12. Multiply that by times negative 2, which, move, which means you move this over 2 to the right also. So you move it a total of 4 places to the right. So you've got to move it back 4 places to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's your answer. Uh, this one, pretend this is negative 243 times negative 1, which is positive 243, but how many places to the right did you move the decimal to make it a 1? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right, so you've got to move it back 5 to the left. So your answer is 0 0.00243. That's also a nice little, little trick in uh, multiplying um, de decimals. Okay, and what I want you to realize, what do I want you to, to recognize a pattern here. See this number 5.6? I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.01. What does multiplying by 0 0.01 do to the decimal point, is what I'm asking. Which way does it move the decimal point and how many places? Well, if you pretend this is 56 times 1, that means you move this to 1 to the right and this 2 to the right, so a total of 3 places. You've got to move the decimal place back 3 to the left. 1, 2, 3. There's your answer. So let me ask that question again. What did multiplying by 0 0.01 do to 5.6? It moved the decimal place 2 to the left, didn't it? Multiplying by 0 0.01 moves the decimal 2 to the left. So let's go over here now. When you multiply negative 2.3 times 1,000, isn't that going to make it bigger? This, this number here is going to make this bigger. And it turns out it, it amounts to moving the decimal place. When you, when, it, when you make a number bigger, you're moving the decimal to the right. When you move in, make the number smaller, you're moving the decimal to the left. So let's see what happens. If you, pre, if you pretend this is a 1, you get negative 2.3 times 1, which is negative 2.3. But then, since you, since you pretend this was a 1, that means you move the decimal 3 to the left. 1, 2, 3. To, to, to counterbalance that, you have to do, undo that and multiply it. You have to move the decimal 3 back to the right. So it becomes 1, 2, 3. So this is your answer. So again, my question is, what did the 1,000 do to negative 
it moved the decimal three to the right, didn't it? When you multiply by a thousand, it's, it, it actually moves the decimal three to the right. So here's the pattern that you, that you have to rec recognize here. When you're multiplying by one, it doesn't change the decimal place. When you multiply by ten, by the way, these are called powers of ten. When you multiply by ten, it moves the decimal one to the right. 100 moves the decimal 2 to the right, 1,000 moves the decimal 3 to the right. Similarly, when you multiply by 1 tenth, that moves it, that's making it smaller, so that moves the decimal 1 to the left. 1 one hundredth moves the decimal 2 to the left. When you multiply by 1 one thousandth, it moves the decimal 3 to the left. So if, if you recognize this pattern here, it makes your multiplying really simple when you're multiplying by powers of 10. So for example, look, look at this one. Uh, if you have 1.4 times 0 0.001, now this is going to make it smaller. Isn't this going to move the decimal 3 to the left? So you take 1.4 and you move the decimal 3 to the left. 1, 2, 3. Nice. When you multiply by 1,000, that's going to make it bigger, right? When you, when you multiply by 1,000, that's going to move the decimal uh, 3 to the right. So you take the decimal here at 2.34, move it 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, and you get negative 2,340. How about this one? You got 243.5, you multiply by negative 0 0.01. Not only does it make it negative, but you're also going to move the decimal two places to the left, right? So you get this. Why don't you try these, these two? Go ahead and see if you can work these two. We'll go over them in just a minute. Okay, in this first one, you're going to move the decimal two to the, you're making it smaller, so move it to the left. Right? Did you get that right? You move it to the left, so you should get this. This one is kind of inter interesting because you're doing two things. This is going to move the decimal 3 to the left, but this is going to move the decimal 2 to the right. So the net difference is moving it 1 to the left. So if you think of it that way, it helps. All right, there's one more thing I want to talk about. We can also divide decimals when you divide by powers of 10. You can also divide... Uh, uh, when, you, when you're dividing by powers of 10 by shifting the de decimal point. The, the trick here is to really make the denominator into a 1. If the denominator is 1, then you can easily tell what the, what the number is. How do you make point 0.1 into a 1? You move the decimal 1 to the right, which means you multiply by 10. So as long as you multiply the top by 10, then you're just multiplying by a factor of 1. So ultimately what that means is, if you move the decimal 1 to the right on the bottom, as long as you move it 1 to the right on the top, the fraction is still equivalent. So 1.7 divided by 0 0.1 when you move the decimal one to the right, one to the right, you get 17 over one, which is just 17. So it's a different, it's a different strategy here. When you divide by powers of 10, you make the bottom into a one. Like, like, take a look at this one. Your goal here is to make the bottom into a one. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by multiplying the bottom by 100. That would move the decimal over two places. As long as you move the top over two places, you're multiplying by one, the fraction is, e is equivalent. So when you do that, you get 1 on the bottom, 123 on the top, so there's your answer, 123. Let's do a couple more here. How would you make this, how would you divide 11.3 uh, by 10? Remember, we're trying to make the bottom into a 1. So what we're going to do is move the decimal over 1 to the left. As long as you move the top 1 to the left, this fraction is still equivalent. You're multiplying top and bottom by 1 tenth. Anyway, so the bottom becomes a 1, the answer is just 1.13. Look at this one. You want to make the bottom into a 1, so you want to move the decimal over 2 to the left. As long as you move the top over 2 to the left, the fraction is still going to be equivalent. So move this over 2 to the left, move the top over 2 to the left, and you end up with this. The bottom is a 1, which is your goal. So the final answer is uh, 0 0.00123. By the way, when you move the decimal over 2 to the left, aren't you multiplying by 1 one hundredth? That's right. All right, try these two. See if you can, see if you can do these two. Let's roll these in just a second. Okay, in this first one, to make the bottom into a one, you move the decimal over three to the right, uh, so it becomes a one. The top becomes, when you move the decimal over three to the right here, you get 3,400. There's your answer. On the last one, uh, you want to move the decimal over three to the left to make the bottom a one. So if you move the bottom over 3 to the left, you get a 1. Top over 3 to the left, you get this. And your final answer would be negative 0 0.0123. Um,